Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about how I think we're going to close out the month of September and also how I think early October is going to go. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. For today's comment of the day, I want to know. How do you want the month of October to go as far as weather is concerned? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know why, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. All right, now first things first, we're taking a look at our 500 millibar geopotential height on the GFS model, and you're probably like, what the heck is this that I'm looking at right now? And don't worry, I'll break it down. Basically, red is associated with high pressure, and blue is associated with lower pressure and lower temperatures. Uh, and this is a very classic... Uh, pattern here. This is what we call a positive PNA, negative NAO pattern, and it really always leads to a really strong trough there in the east. It, it, you know, nine times out of ten, this leads to very cold temperatures out there in the east. Very classic pattern. This is the GFS for October 2nd. So this is the way we're looking as of right now to start the month of October. Now, this is pretty far out and things can change a bit, but I wanted to give you guys an insight onto what I'm thinking because it's looking quite cold. Uh, this is a ridge in the west, a ridge out there south of Greenland, which is very, very key indicator that we're going to have a trough in the east. And sure enough, you see it there, very strong trough there in the east. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at one more map that looks pretty similar to that on an ensemble model. And then we're going to get into some actual temperatures, things like that. So here's the same look on our Canadian ensemble model, and it's showing the same exact thing. This one actually looks a little bit more classic. We have a very positive PNA there, very negative NAO, and this leads to a strong trough in the eastern United States. As you can see, those lines dip way down in the eastern United States. That's indicating a trough, and you see the blues again associated with lower pressure and lower temperatures. All right, now here's the temperature anomalies on this same frame because I just wanted to show you. Uh, what we'd be taking a look at. And as you can see, uh, due to that pattern, we would have blues in the eastern United States, the very cold compared to normal, four to eight degrees below average Celsius, similar to what we're experiencing right now in the east. Uh, we would be having something similar to that once more. Again, let's take a look at those above average temperatures out there in the west. That's our positive PNA. All right, now what we're taking a look at now is our past three days temperature anomalies here. And as you can see, we've had an overwhelmingly cold period here the past three days. This is Fahrenheit, so if you're in those lighter blues, you're anywhere from one to four degrees below average Fahrenheit. If you're in the greens, you're anywhere from four to eight degrees below average Fahrenheit. And then you see that kind of purplish blue there in this, the inside of the green. You're anywhere from eight to 12 degrees below average Fahrenheit. And if you happen to be in those purples, you're 12 or more degrees below average Fahrenheit over the past three days. So very, very cold compared to normal, and we've actually had a positive PNA, bringing those warmer than normal conditions, mostly for the Western United States, with the exception of some portions of California there and Oregon as well. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at our PNA oscillation there, and then we're going to start taking a look at the future, taking a look at what the GFS thinks as far as uh, our our surface temperature anomalies, and then we're going to start getting into our week-by-week -week CFS temperature anomalies. Take a look at that as well. Now, I think I've kind of explained why the PNA is so important. Basically, a positive PNA would bring above normal temperatures to the Western United States. And when there's above normal temperatures in the Western United States, the cold is more likely to go to the Eastern United States because it's not going to the Western United States uh, and it has to go somewhere. So, you know, probably I would say at least 75% of the time, it means that there's going to be some colder than normal temperatures in the Eastern United States, as long as there's some sort of a neutral or negative AO, and I know that probably sounds like a different language to some of you, uh, rest assured, uh, all you need to know is the stuff coming up in a second. So this is going to be overwhelmingly positive until at least the 5th of October here. This is all you need to know about this chart. There's some negative phases like the September 25th there, a little bit negative. It's a little bit negative right now, but for the most part, it's going to be positive most of the time. Here's the GFS for today. As you can see, it's well below normal temperatures today. You probably feel it. You know, you probably felt it yesterday too, and tomorrow you'll probably feel it. Uh, it's very cold compared to normal. Very nice. It was actually 63 here in Virginia, which is far below normal. It was very pleasant. 
it's been a long time since we've had a September this that's this way, you know, below normal temperatures. It feels like fall, actually, which is unusual for September nowadays. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to move on towards Monday, then we're going to take it towards Tuesday, and then we're going to move all the way to Saturday. Just take a look at how the pattern is going to progress. So we're taking a look at tomorrow or Monday, and as you can see, the purples and dark blues are still going to be around far below normal temperatures, but they're moving further eastward uh, as a ridge tries to move in briefly. Let's take a look at Tuesday, September 22nd here, and it's a little less cold, a little closer to normal there for the eastern United States. And then by the time we're at Saturday, September 26th, as you can see, uh, we actually get a little bit into the yellow. Still very, very close to normal, but nowhere near as cold as it has been these past few Days. So you can see that there is a change that is occurring. Uh, unfortunately, for some of us cold lovers, obviously some of us don't want that to happen. And then by the time we're at Sunday, September 27th, we actually go into the above average column. Again, we're starting to get further out, so this might be a little bit different, but I'm pretty confident this is going to be the look. And this is right around the time where the, the models start to show that PNA go a little bit negative again. Uh, so you can see some colder temperatures out west that's, again, encouraging the warmer than normal conditions to head out east. And that's sure enough what happens. Uh, but notice there's some colder temperatures behind that. And those are moving quickly to the east. And then by the time we're at September 28th, as you can see, those are getting awfully close to the eastern United States. So we're starting to see a cool down once more. And take a look out west. That's positive PNA, guys. That very far above normal temperatures, widespread throughout the western United States. That's far positive PNA pattern, and then the cold gets shoved to the east. So I'm not kidding when I say this is a very important teleconnection, and you can almost always predict the pattern based on the PNA, the AO, and the NAO. That's all you need. It's all you need. Okay, now here's Tuesday, September 29th, and as you can see, purples and pinks are widespread throughout the eastern United States. If this was to verify, which I highly doubt it will precisely verify, but it should be something close to this, if it was to look exactly like this, we would actually have a colder pattern on September 29th and moving into the beginning of October than we're in right now. And that's actually, that's actually very impressive because it's very far below normal as we speak right now. It might be even colder later on, like I said. Here's September 30th. As you can see, pretty much a lot of the same huge ridge out in the central United States. And you can see that PNA is starting to kind of look a little more negative here by this point. Uh, and that's what we saw actually on the chart. It kind of get got closer and closer to neutral as we headed on. Uh, the Pacific Northwest seeing some below normal temperatures is going to bring that PNA to more of a neutral uh, pattern, I guess you could say. And then by the time we're at October third, moving pretty far in, the Southeast is dealing with some colder than normal conditions. Still, the Northeast ha sees some warmer than normal conditions move in, but we already see our next cool down moving in. The PNA is looking a little bit more positive by this point. And it looks like we will proceed with this frequent cooldown pattern for the central and eastern United States with a ridge out west overwhelmingly bringing positive PNA type conditions, also encouraging the colder than normal conditions out east. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at our CFS model in just a moment on seven day increments. We're going to look at the 19th through the 26th of September. Then we're going to take a look at the 3rd through the 10th of October. It's going to tell us a lot about our pattern, and then we're going to take one more look at that 500 geopotential height, uh, which also tells us a lot about the upcoming pattern. All right, now here we are taking a look at that first day, that first seven day increment, sorry, and this is the 19th through the 26th. The one thing I want to mention before we move any further forward, this model takes the average of 12 previous runs, so it does four runs a day. So it's taking the runs of three separate days, three whole days. But not only that, it's actually getting the opinion from four separate members on each of those 12 runs. So this actually begins to average out very quickly. Uh, you'll notice our first frame here is very aggressive. We see very warm up north and then very cold in the southeast. Every single frame from this point on is going to be a lot closer to normal, and you'll see that in just a moment. But for the first frame here, the 19th through the 26th, as you can see, far below normal temperatures down there for the southeast and pretty far below normal temperatures up for the northeast. But the north central and a lot of the west in general is dealing with some warmer than normal conditions. Let's move on to that next frame. And you can see for the 3rd through the 10th of October, it's a lot of the same, just a little bit watered down. And again, that's because we're taking a look at 12 runs on four members. It begins to average out very quickly because those differing opinions become a lot further from each other, and that gets us a very averaged out look. All right, but still, 
uh, for that beginning portion of October. It appears the southeast, and I, I would go ahead and say most of the eastern United States is probably going to be dealing with at least some slightly below normal temperatures, if not more below normal temperatures than that. All right, now let's take a look briefly at that 500 geopotential height. And this is for the 3rd through the 10th of October as well. And I wanted to show this because... Although it's showing only a little bit of below normal temperatures, I think it's because it's averaged out because take a look at our 500 geopotential height. That's showing a positive PNA with a negative NAO, which is the same pattern that has led to our far below normal temperatures, not only today from the time I'm speaking, but will most likely lead to some below average temperatures for the end of September. And now this model is showing the same thing for October, but when you look at the temperatures, it's just a lot more averaged out. I think it's pretty safe to say that it's underdoing the cold a little bit based on our surface pattern that I'm taking a look at here. Uh, the teleconnections are really leading me to believe that likely we will be seeing a cold pattern for the first half of October. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Let's get into the comment of the day. I asked you guys, when do you think we will see Tropical Storm Gamma? And Mr. Waffle said, most likely early next week for Gamma, which is going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, coming up in just a couple days. Uh, and with how this season has gone, I have to believe you're probably right that very soon we will see our next tropical storm. Anyway, for our patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Diamond patrons, Alicia Davis, Madbird, Cindy Klein, Dan Hazard, and Mark J, alongside our Platinum patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.